Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 18th, 2017. This is from my friend Navy Thomas A. Thank you, Tom. NASA discovers spacecraft, spacecraft missing for eight years. And this is an article they snatched from PC Mag, by the way. Space is vast, so when some piece of human technology goes missing outside of Earth's atmosphere, it's very difficult to find it again, and that task gets especially hard when the object is very small and isn't emitting any kind of signal. In October 2008, the Indian Space Research Organization launched its first lunar probe called Chandrayaan-1. It successfully entered a lunar orbit in November 2008, but in August 2009, things started to go wrong. Technical problems began to surface, including sensors failing and thermal shielding not working effectively. On August 29, 2009, contact was lost. However, NASA actually has uh, been able to track it down, and that's a quite challenging task because this thing is only 1.5 meters wide at its longest, and it's at a distance of 237,000 miles away, being uh, circling the moon. If they, and that's what they weren't even sure either, was it really still even in orbit around the moon, and uh, where was it in its orbital path? So, Chandran One was located using NASA's Goldstone Deep Speed. I can almost talk. Deep Space Communications Complex in California in a beam of microwaves. The radar echoes bounced back and were received by the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia. The only lead they had to go on was the spacecraft's last known orbit from 2009, which was a polar orbit. So the beam was focused on the moon's north pole, hoping the spacecraft would pass by. Sure enough, it did, and multiple detections over a three-month period allowed NASA to confirm the object definitely was Chandrayaan 1. So I think that's kind of cool. Let me turn down my other radio in the background here. <clears throat> okay, let me get back over here. Yes, it's a, I have an amateur radio going on in the background, and I may actually bring that up in the future. That uh, I've recently, not recently, but for about a year, been into amateur radio. And uh, I will probably talk about that in a future TDD report. But anyway, very cool. As usual, all the links to all the articles I am talking about will be found down in the description. And this next one is from sciencenews.org, and the title is Smartphones May Be Changing the Way We Think. And it talks about, you know, mental outlook and using different um, types of technology, not just smartphones, but they talk about computers, video games, and things like that. And I'm going to actually take time rather than relate to most of this article because it's basically a lot of statistics about, you know, portion of U.S. college students who reported checking their phones at least once overnight and just different talks about the habits. But one thing that kind of fascinated me, at least the way I look at things, is if you're down past the midpoint of the article, and I'll put the image up here while I talk about it, is it's a um, line chart uh, titled Screen Time is Linked with Mental Well-Being. And it's kind of interesting because if you look in the upper left part, you're seeing using smartphones. Now, don't worry so much about the blue and the red lines. That's just a uh, surveys taking place either during the weekdays or weekends but uh, look at the start satisfaction is just slightly above 48 and then it goes up above 49 an hour later and then by about two hours it starts coming down a little bit and then by you know well by an hour and a half and then by two hours it's basically back to about what it was before so two hours later using the smartphone and they report maybe about the same but then you start losing ground when you get to three four and five hours it starts really dropping as far as your uh, mental well-being based on this survey. But even more interesting is playing video games. Starting out with around a 46, the chart seems to go up close to a 49, and it really sustains for a long time. If you look at one, two, three, and four hours, it still has not dropped back to where it started, to the 46, and you got to go to five, six hours, and then finally, after it reaches almost seven hours, you're back to about the same point or a little lower so six and a half hours of playing video games. Now, realize this is average. This does not necessarily apply to any individual. An individual could fall anywhere along the spectrum, too, and could even be off the charts for one individual. But this is just as a group uh, dynamic overall, and I want to give another conclusion about it, too, just in case anybody thinks it concludes something that it really doesn't. And then you look down to the bottom left. Using computer starts out at about 47, goes up to a 48, and then maybe 48 and a little bit more stays kind of level and then starts dropping back down in about three hours and by about four hours it's back to almost the same exact point so using computers about four hours and then watching TV as a comparison starts out at about 47 goes up and peaks just a little bit above 48 really tracks computers pretty closely and then if you follow the blue line uh, it goes back down close at three hours and uh, by four hours it's right about to the same point again and then it starts dropping a little bit at five hours so computers and watching TV and movies is about the same satisfaction. So in case you're 
thinking this is talking about overall mental health. No, it, it says for even the heaviest users, the relationship between technology use and poor mental health wasn't all that strong. For scale, the potential negative effects of all screen time was less than a third of the size of the positive effects of eating a breakfast. So um, the researchers are not saying that this is something that's going to cause people uh, long-term any kind of mental uh, illness or anything like that. They're just saying your, your mental state of mind over these periods of time based on this survey. <clears throat> and last up, um, physicists find that as clocks get more precise, time gets more fuzzy. Time is weird. This is sciencealert.com. Time is weird in spite of what we think. The universe doesn't have a master clock to run by, making it possible for us to experience time differently depending on how we're moving or how much gravity is pulling on us. Now physicists have combined two grand theories of physics to conclude our only time are to conclude not only is time not universally consistent, any clock we use to measure it will blur the flow of time in its surrounding space. They're, both, they're basically talking about as clocks get more and more accurate the uh, certainty of the exact time that the clock is displaying to you is actually going to start getting fuzzy and not getting as exact too. It's kind of like pouring more and more energy into the system to uh, make smaller and smaller measurements. The fact of pouring the energy into it actually causes your measurements to uh, not be as exact. Another thing that I talked about on a previous TDD report was the fact that these clocks are getting so accurate now, the latest ones, that if, for example, if they could put it in the size of like a wall, a typical wall clock, you know, like a 12-inch wall clock, just the fact of you moving the clock up and down the wall changes how it uh, keeps track of time because gravity affects time, too. If you uh, fly in a spaceship and get close to a heavy uh, object in space and are able to survive any of the other effects, time is going to slow down, although you won't notice it. Um, things far away from you, like people back on Earth, it would seem to, to be moving very, very fast while time would slow down for you in comparison. So those are some of the things we're dealing with now. And, and if you didn't realize, and I've talked about it before, even the uh, atomic clocks aboard the GPS satellites have to make compensation for the fact they're actually um, jumping ahead in time. Or no, they're, not, they're actually slowing down in time um, because of the fact they're zooming around the Earth at such a high speed that would actually make the calculations come out wrong if they just kept with that exact time and didn't compensate for the fact that they're actually uh, seeing a different type of uh, time. Now we're talking fractions, very very small fractions <coughs> of a second but still enough to, to keep navigation from being as accurate as it could be so they actually compensate on those kind of uh, satellites. So in conclusion this is our findings suggest that we need to re-examine our ideas about the nature of time when both quantum mechanics and general relativity are taken into account, says researcher Esteban Castro. So how does this affect us on a day-to-day -day level? Like a lot of theoretical physics, probably not much. So I don't know if we'll ever get to where we need, but you know, who would have thought that we needed GPS and stuff like that, that we would have to actually have functioning atomic clocks orbiting overhead that had to compensate for the exact, for the effect of relativity, uh, giving them a different time uh, line that they follow compared to ours. So who knows? Maybe we'll have uh, some kind of quantum computers or something to be able to deal with that. And maybe in the future I would like to talk about uh, a friend of mine did a video about time machines and he mentioned my name in the in the video. His name is Brian. And uh, if anybody's interested, maybe next week I could actually do a little bit of studying up and see if anything's been advanced as far as any ideas on uh, traveling backwards in time, traveling forward in time, how to build a proper time machine, um, things like that. So if you guys are interested, uh, maybe I will actually put together a show just with a a one subject show where I concentrate on the ideas between uh, about time machines and how they might possibly operate at least based on the latest theories and the latest practice that I'm aware of and uh, so yeah if you're interested in that let me know and I'll uh, maybe put that together as a one subject show either next week or sometime in the near future so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week